corporate news is likely to be thin on the ground in the run-up to Christmas, though do please keep an eye out for unscheduled announcements. In particular, any firm that's cheeky enough to try and slip out a profit warning when nobody's looking. Now, as a result, in this week's video, we're going to look back at the key market developments from the past 12 months. These five trends from 2021 could yet make their presence felt in 2022, so they're worthy of further study, especially if you're preparing a new year review of your portfolios to make sure that they still fit nicely with your overall strategy, target returns, time horizon, and appetite for risk. And as ever, by appetite for risk, we mean the willingness and ability to withstand losses in pursuit of gains. So theme number one is money flows in the UK. And this is because it's important because the old saying goes, bull markets end when the money runs out. So the good news at least is that the flow of initial public offerings or IPOs in the UK, and for that matter, secondary raisings by firms that are already listed, it's nowhere near the level seen at the past peak in the FTSE 100 in 2006, 7, 8. According to the London Stock Exchange website, primary listings have totaled £14.7 billion so far in 2021, and secondary offerings have soaked up a further £24.7 billion of investors' cash. Now, they are not insignificant sums, but ordinary dividends from the FTSE 100 alone will exceed £80 billion, according to analysts' estimates for 2021. Moreover, members of the UK's leading index have already declined £5 billion worth of special dividends and nearly £19 billion worth of cash returns in the form of share buybacks. That lot comes to over £100 billion between them. And then come the proceeds from the 70-odd bids for UK-listed firms of all shapes and sizes. The good news, therefore, at least for investors with exposure to the UK equities, is the money does not seem to be running out. That in turn suggests the UK market may have upside potential in 2022, providing, and I do stress providing, the new offering pipeline is kept to sensible levels. I accept that could be a big proviso. The higher the market goes, the more IPOs may crawl out of the woodwork, at least if history is any guide. Theme number two, that's oil. Oil's near 40% gain in 2021 will have surprised many, but demand for energy continues to grow and renewables are not yet producing sufficient capacity to take the base load strain. That means hydrocarbons are still important, whether we like it or not, and supply is being constrained, partly by the machinations of OPEC Plus and, its, and their allies, partly by geopolitics and US sanctions against Iran and Venezuela, and partly by oil firms themselves. Fund managers are pressuring the oil majors to invest in renewables, governments are refusing to sanction fr fresh exploration, and insurers appear reluctant to insure new projects. As a result, the aggregate capex to sales ratio of the seven oil majors, BP, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil, Eni, Shell and Total Energies, is heading toward multi-year lows. This could create a supply and demand squeeze if, and I stress if, the economy shakes off the latest strain of COVID-19 and keeps growing and takes oil uh, energy demand higher. And higher oil prices, if, if that's what we get, could play a major role in shaping inflation. So watch this space in 2022. The third trend to watch, well, that's the misery index. Not a necessarily a very festive theme, but here I'm indebted to a conference hosted a couple of months ago by M&G's Bond Vigilantes team for reminding me of the importance of the misery index. Developed by economist Arthur Oaken in the 1960s, this indicator simply adds together the prevailing rate of unemployment and the prevailing rate of inflation. As such, it defines the balancing act which central banks face when they set policies they juggle unemployment and inflation, two great potential sources of unhappiness for us all. Now, right now, galloping inflation means the misery index is going higher, even if unemployment is coming down. Policymakers must now decide whether to start tapering quantitative easing and raising interest rates as a result. Theme number four, well, that's government bond yields. Using the UK as a benchmark, the yields on gilts or UK government bonds rose and their prices fell. 
as inflation picked up pace and the Bank of England had to confront the prospect of whether to start tightening monetary policy. The question now is whether a trend towards lower yields and higher prices that dates back to the early 1980s as the Volcker-led US Federal Reserve in the States and the Thatcher-Lawson axis in the government in the UK is decisively broken or not. Now, this chart does suggest we may be seeing a breakout higher in yields and therefore lower in prices, but we have seen many false signals such as that in the past four decades. So keep watching this space. And the fifth and final theme is perhaps inevitably central banks. No discussion of financial markets being, can be complete without an assessment of central bank policy. Interest rates have been kept at historic lows since spring 2020, and quantitative easing, or QE, asset buying programs designed to suppress interest rates, force cash into financial markets, and create a so-called wealth effect, well, they mean together that balance sheets have ballooned. In aggregate, the balance sheet of the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, Swiss National Bank and US Federal Reserve has grown by $9.5 trillion since the start of 2020, or 67%. Not insignificant sums of money at all. The question here in the UK now is do a 0.25% base rate and £895 billion of quantitative easing seem appropriate when the Office for Budget Responsibility is forecasting 6% GDP growth 4% 4% inflation and just 4.8% unemployment in 2022. At a time when house prices are rising at the fastest rate for 15 years, asset prices more widely elevated, and parts of the financial markets worldwide are feeling positively bubbly. I'll leave that to you to decide. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 does complicate decision making, and central banks are clearly weighing the danger of inflation on one side against the threats posed by unemployment, higher interest costs in a massively indebted world, and sagging asset prices, and thus perhaps consumer confidence on the other. It's a very tricky balancing act. But central banks will have to prove in 2022 that they're ahead of the curve and not behind it, if markets are to keep the faith in the policies which have done so much to stoke risk appetite in equity markets and suppress bond yields in fixed income ones for more than a decade. I hope that you and your families are all in good health and good spirits. May I wish you all the very best for the festive season and a prosperous 2022. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.